In every generation, there's a moment where everything changes. This is one of those moments. Introducing GE Additive. Uh, I'm Mark Saunders. I'm Director of Global Solution Centers at Renishaw. At uh, Renishaw, we are here displaying metal additive manufacturing technology, and the Solution Centers is where we work with companies to develop industrial AM processes. Can you just talk me through a customer journey, where they go from their initial idea and how they get through to series production? Sure. Well, of course, it all starts with design. And you know, the power of additive is in what you can make with it rather than how you make it. So we can create uh, really elaborate geometries that have uh, performances that are un unachievable using conventional technology. So we start in the design world, uh, and you know, a lot of the uh, uh, companies now are developing uh, you know, really interesting new tools for generative design, for topological optimization, and so on. So the example we're showing here at the show is uh, a car hinge. So this is a hinge for a gullwing door um, for a vehicle that has been designed by Dassault Systems. Uh, so this has been designed within the Katia uh, software suite. And what they've done here, as you can see, is created a really interesting organic shape and that's based around a set of parameters, uh, hard points on the design that they have to have fixed and loads that the part has to bear. And they've then created a shape that is also one that we can successfully build additively that minimizes weight and maximizes the performance of the part. So that's where it all starts in the design world. What then happens is we need to look at how we build that part. So the next stage is where we bring that CAD model into uh, a build processor environment. Renishaw showing its new Quantum 2017 software here at Formnext for the first time. And that provides an environment in which the, uh, the, the way in which the part will be supported uh, and sliced uh, and then processed on the machine is all, is all controlled. Uh, so we, we then create a build file that comes to the machine. The rest of the journey then is in the factory. So, so now we're making our part, we create our, our product like this on, uh, on a build plate. We build four of these together on a build plate uh, and then we wire them off. And then typically we move on through the rest of the, of the, of the process. So gauging that part to check that it is uh, conforming when it comes off the, the additive machine. And then moving into the machining environment. So here we've got a fixture for the machine tool where the part is gonna have these, these precision finished uh, surfaces produced on the machine. There's metrology involved in that, of course, in setting it up. Uh, and then we do the machining process, and then we can verify the whole part at the end of it. So, so we've got a chain here, a chain of processes from, from the design phase all the way through build preparation, build, post-processing, and verification that provides a, a connected chain of processes. And that's exactly what users want. They don't want to leave a specific software to go into another one and run a show like I think that's I think that's very important. Yes, of course they have uh, their CAD environment that they're used to. They have their product lifecycle management software, their engineering databases, and of course they want they want to stay in that environment. So we're working with companies, including Dassault Systems, to integrate our build preparation software into their design systems so that the customer can, can develop their, their additive part and the process in their favorite environment, in their native CAD environment. Do you think we're starting to get to a point where we see real life use cases all the time, people using the tech, AM technologies integrating into their workflow? It's, it's definitely happening, and we're seeing now interest in more and more different sectors. So this is an automotive example, of course, but you know, there are well-known examples in aerospace, which are growing and growing. Uh, we are also working in consumer electronics, in consumer products. We're showing customized mountain bike here at the show for the first time, for example. So you know, there's, there's an awful lot of different areas now that are, are realizing what additive can do for their product performance and realizing that can give them a competitive edge, and that's why they're investing. And a lot of people are interested in healthcare, the benefits for AM in healthcare. Indeed. And this Renishaw specialise in that, don't they? Yeah, we do. So we have a business making dental copings. Uh, we also make um, uh, orthopedic implants for cranioplasties and, and maxillofacial applications. So yeah, that's an area we're, we're working very closely in as well. So yeah, it's another great area for additive. Yeah. It's a, I would imagine that it's a, it's one of the stories that people like to hear because it's a technology changing people's lives for the better. 
Indeed, yeah. I mean, some of the impacts on, of, of additive in, in medical can be tremendous. And of course, one of the key capabilities of additive is that it can develop, we can develop customised parts. And of course, every person is different, every patient is different, and therefore every implant that, that, that is fitted to them should be unique to them. That then minimises surgical time, it tends to improve the recovery chances uh, and gives much better outcomes for everybody. How do you think the, the visitor knowledge of additive manufacturing is at the moment? I think it's changing. I think it really is growing. I mean, this, this is a show that is really focused on additive manufacturing rather than 3D printing, and you really see that in the visitors that come through the door. You know, they're, they're experienced in manufacturing. Some of them are relatively new to additive, but they're coming at it with, a, I think, a very mature attitude now. There's a real realization that this isn't about just making the parts we used to make in a different way. It's about making products that, that have better performance, and, and I think everyone's grasped that now and is it's, they're bursting with ideas of things that they could do in their own business. And what materials can the Rene imprint in? Uh, well, a, a, very, a very wide range of yeah. materials. So obviously aluminium, but also things like titanium, uh, various steels, including tool steels and high-speed steels, um, uh, inconels and nickel alloys, cobalt chrome. So there's a pretty wide range of materials now that we can work with. Okay, yeah. And do you want to just talk us through the technology that's involved in uh, the 500? Sure, yeah. So, so th this machine has really been developed with uh, industrial additive processes in mind. So uh, the first thing to say about it is it's a uh, high power laser, so a 500 watt, 75 micron laser, so it can process advanced materials, it can melt anything in, up to tungsten, um, so very high energy density. Uh, we also have a very inert and stable operating environment, so we create that operating environment by creating a vacuum and then backfilling with argon, and that means we can create and hold very low oxygen contents in the environment, which means we don't get uh, contamination of the of reactive materials like titanium and aluminium, by pit, which would otherwise pick up oxygen from the gas flow. Uh, and then the other sort of key areas are around automation. So the machine includes an integral powder management system. So uh, all the overflow powder and powder that's not used in the uh, not not solidified in the build process is kept within the machine. It's not removed for sieving. All of that happens on the machine under an inert environment. Uh, so the level of uh, powder handling by operators is, is drastically reduced. And do you think that does something like the Renishaw Solution Centres um, lower the barriers to, for small to medium-sized businesses to get involved in that? You know, perhaps they couldn't afford a machine to sure. buy a machine. You, you've been reading our literature, haven't you? No, uh, <laughs> no, that's exactly right. That's exactly what they're there to do. They are there to help companies to take those first steps, to gather the knowledge, to build their confidence, to build the business case for additive. It's a sizable investment. They need to know that they're making the right decision and that the product that they're considering to manufacture additively is going to have the performance, have the, have the costs and the quality that they need. So that's what the Solution Centre is all about, to give companies the, the chance to get that experience, supported by Renishaw engineers, given that assistance to get to the point where they're ready to, ready to use it in their own factory. And how many Solution Centres are there now? Uh, there will be six very shortly. So there are four operational today with two more openings. So we have two in Europe, in the UK and in Germany, in Asia, in India and China, uh, and in North America, in the US and Canada.